Okay, this is probably the hardest equation of anything that you're going to have to deal with in this unit as far as trig equations are concerned. And it doesn't look that bad, right? It's just sine minus cosine equals a number. But the reason this is difficult is because you're going to have to combine together several different identities, um, trig handling techniques, solutions, there's going to be extraneous stuff, and you'll have to use an old technique from algebraic manipulation that you may not realize is important here. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And I just want to point out what the real problem in this is. See that number right there? That is an issue for us because if that were just zero, look how easy this would be to solve. Sine minus cosine equals zero, right? Sine equals cosine. Okay, I just added cosine to each side. Divide each side by cosine and you get this. Sine over cosine equals one. Well, what's sine over cosine? That's just tangent according to the quotient's identity. And tangent equals one, that's something we can find on the unit circle. So wouldn't that be nice? Unfortunately, that's not what we have to deal with. We have this thing, which is standing in our way of using the quotient identity. So quotient identity, sorry, we're not going to use you. Now, um, Pythagorean identity, I don't know, can we use that? I don't see any squares in here, right? Look at all these Pythagorean things. They have squares, squared, squares. They're all squares of some kind. And there's no squared in this equation. It's all single exponents. So that says to me, maybe the Pythagorean identity isn't going to work. And now I look at the double angles and I think, well, okay, but there's no double angles in here either. And I don't see how to get it to look like any of these things. Certainly not the tangent one. That's just crazy. So I don't know which identity to apply to this thing. And I can't factor it, right? We want to get it into this form right here, but I don't see how to do that either. So a lot of people get to an equation like this and they are just completely stuck. I want to remind you of something that you actually know already. You can square both sides. This is something that we have done many times before, particularly in equations that have square roots in them, right? If I have something like, I don't know, uh, square root of x equals 2, how do we solve it? We square both sides, right? Well, I've got a radical sign in here. I mean, maybe that would give you the idea of squaring both sides. Maybe not. But let's try that. See where we go. Sine omega minus cosine omega. We're going to square both sides equals 1 minus radical 3 over 2 squared, okay? So nothing too fancy there. We just need to do some foiling. And what you get on the left, be careful about this. Make sure you don't make any mistakes here. Sine squared minus 2 sine omega cosine omega plus cosine squared. That's the left side. And the right side is also going to involve some foiling. Um, if you want to write it out the long way, that might not be a bad idea. Uh, I'm just going to go kind of shorthand through this. 1 minus 2 square root 3 plus square root of 3 squared, which is just 3. And the denominator gets squared also. That's 4. So um, you should, as an aside, you should have the perfect squares memorized to make this stuff quicker. But it's not a bad exercise to go ahead and prove to yourself that what I just did is true and I didn't make any mistakes there. So now what? Well, this certainly looks worse, but in some ways, I think this looks better because I'm looking at sine squared plus cosine squared and I'm thinking, bingo, Santa Claus right there. Okay, so I can rewrite this thing. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So it's one minus two sine omega cosine omega equals, well, we'll simplify the right as long as we're here. One plus three is four. And now, what else can I do? Um, well, take a look at this. Um, let me get the right ink here. 2 sine cosine is also an identity. That's the double angle identity. So it, it really does help to have these things memorized because it makes it quicker for you to see things in the equation that you can use. Right? Otherwise, you're just sort of fumbling around. So 1 minus sine of 2 omega equals, and I'm going to simplify the right side a little more. 4 over 4 is 1, and 2 over 4 turns into 1 over 2. So now this is looking quite nice, especially when you realize you can subtract 1 from each side and just get negative, two, negative sine of 2 omega equals negative radical 3 over 2, and divide each side by negative 1. 
but that makes this even cleaner. Sine of 2 omega equals radical 3 over 2. Well, that's quite nice, because now I know I can go to the unit circle and ask, where is the y-coordinate, that's the sine value, where's the y-coordinate equal to positive root 3 over 2? That's these upper angles right here. Okay, they're kind of steep. Those are your 60 degree angles from a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that means 2 omega equals pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. But wait, there's more. Because this is a double angle, 2 omega, not 1 omega, it means, uh, uh, what do I want to say here? Here's a, here's a way of saying it. We know that omega has to go between 2 pi and 0, right? That means 2 pi, or 2 omega, has to go between 4 pi and 0. That means we're going around the circle twice. So 1 and 2. So that means we hit these angles again. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and their coterminals are 7 pi over 3 and 8 pi over 3. So now, not done yet, we just found solutions for 2 omega. We have to find solutions for, yeah, we almost wrote 4 omega. We have to write solutions for omega itself. That's going to be pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 8 pi over 6. And you may be thinking to yourself, finally, but wait, there's more. Go back to the original equation. Okay, Sine minus cosine equals 1 minus root 3 over 2. And think to yourself, domain restrictions. Do I have any kind of domain restrictions to worry about? I would say no, just looking at it, because sine and cosine have no domain restrictions. You can plug any angle into those, it's going to be fine. But we did something a little tricky here. We squared both sides. And when you square both sides, or square root both sides, you have to be careful because you are opening the possibility of extraneous solutions. In other words, you did all the math right. And for some reason, when you plug things back in, it's wrong. Okay, that's what, that's what extraneous means. So extraneous is possible when you square both sides. So now we have to plug these answers into our original equation to figure out if they are correct or not. So let's get that original equation. We'll write it down here and just get to work. Sine minus cosine. So what do we have? Uh, sine minus cosine equals 1 minus radical 3 over 2. Okay? And I'm just going to plug these things in one at a time. Well, let's start out with pi over 6. So sine of pi over 6, it helps to have these things memorized because I'm going to go kind of fast here. That's 1 half minus radical 3 over 2. So is that good? No. Nope looks like it. 1 half minus radical 3 over 2 is this thing. So we're good. That means this is a check. Let's try 2 pi over 6, or in other words, pi over 3. So pi over 3. Let's try that one. Now sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. And cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So is radical 3 over 2 minus 1 half equal to this? No, it's basically the negative version of that. So this one does not work. And you have to go through that process again for 7 pi over 6 and 8 pi over 6. But what's going to happen is you'll see 7 pi over 6 works just fine. 8 pi over 6 gets crossed out. So there are our two solutions. And that's why I said this is one of the trickiest problems there is because you have to see um, how to find your way to identities. And then you have to remember that squaring both sides is a little problematic because it introduces the possibility of extraneous solutions.